Welcome back to another review or video of my whiskey collection. Uh, part two of three. We've done American whiskies. And now we're going to do Swedish whiskies. And why Swedish whiskies? Well, I live in Sweden, first of all. And also, I do think that Swedish whiskies are being unrepresented, or you call it, appreciated in the whiskey community. Unfortunately, also have to do with availability, what you can get. Of course, I do understand that. But I do want to show a little bit of my whiskey collection here, what I have. Uh, so we're gonna start with my closest distiller to where I live, and which is the only distiller I actually have visited that Swedish, and that is uh, Ven, Spirit of Ven, um, not far from here, take, take two hours at the highest, two and a half hours maybe. So the first one that I really do like is their Mercurius. This is the first Swedish corn whiskey ever produced. So far, the only one, as far as I know, I think so. There might be. But still, this is really good stuff. I haven't opened this one yet. Nice green wax. Next one will be um, a corn whiskey they done called uh, Venus. Also, really good. Seriously, this is really good stuff. I know Antonio from Whiskey Quest really liked these because he gave me a sample of it and he really enjoyed them. Uh, next one will be uh, from their series they did with the Star Constellation because that island is very famous for. A um, guy, a man who lived there many, 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 many years ago, called Tico Boy, who did a lot of astronomy and that kind of stuff. So, um, this is uh, number seven, the Al -Qaid. It's really nice. It has a huge maturation or component of different casks that's been blended and finished and all that kind of stuff. But it's really nice. If you get your hands on these, they're really good. And also, the shape of the bowl is cool. Unfortunately, all of them are 45. Percent. These two are 45.6 percent. This one is only 45 percent. It only comes in half liter bottles, which most Swedish whiskies do, unfortunately. But that's how it is in order to produce and sell. Uh, my last van is this one, uh, number six, the Missar. Also good. I don't really drink that much because no one has so many bottles. Where are you going to start? That's why sometimes you should maybe not open all of them like I do. Save them for a rainy day. Anyway, um, it's going to pause and we'll be right back with the next one. So, um, from another Swedish whiskey distillery, they do, I think they do gin again, also in vodka, maybe. It's called Vattedalen, um, from Jämtland, which is a Swedish state or region here. And this is their rye whiskey, it was the first one they ever produced. I haven't drank that much from it. This is really good. It was only 400 bottles produced and 46%. This is really good stuff. And uh, it came out of nowhere, no one really knew. But what is this? So I just had to have a bottle. Then they released another one. This is a single cast, four years old. I think this one is also like three years old or something like that. Did a four year old single cast on a half a liter this time. This was a 70 cent liter though. This one is 48%. I haven't really got it into it yet, but. Um, nice cork. It's beautiful. It's still young, but it's beautiful. Then we have another distiller here, which I only have one bottle from. And that's due to the fact it's really hard to get bottles from this distiller, because they sell out that fast. And it's gonna become a really big distiller when they get their age up to 10 years. And that is a Gamma Stiller Whiskey. And this is the Anna Castilla, which is one of 1,000 bottles produced. 50.6% ABV. It's like four years old, but this is wonderful stuff. Unfortunately, I only have one bottle, half a liter again. But it is wonderful stuff, so. We'll be right back very soon. So, uh, another distillery, which I highlight a lot here, is called High Coast. Yeah, so here we go. Now, this is the old name, Box, but this is Dalve. Really good one. Really good Swedish, lightly peated, with bourbon cast matured whiskey. Fucking amazing. Uh, next one, though, is Dark Is My Soul. This is by, now this is another, it's an old label as well. Uh, and this is a 70 cent liter. Now it's only sold in half a liter, fortunately. And a different label, uh, but still dark. 50% uh, is a Finnish Peter Eximene, so PX cask finish. Can you see that? Wonderful stuff. This is really good. Me and Emma talked a lot about this one. And this is really good Swedish whiskey. And now to my third and last. High cost I have is from an independent bottler here in Sweden, known as uh, Selected Malts. So if you ever find anything from Selected Malts outside, your, outside our country, please check them out. They are actually doing some really good stuff here. So this is from their series they did with High Coast. This is an eight-year-old Sherry Hawkshead single cask, one of uh, 490 bottles. And 
it's amazing. Seriously, this is really good stuff. It is worth, well, or was very expensive. It's gonna be even more expensive on the secondary market. But this was a really good whiskey. Good Swedish whiskey that I hope people could get their hands on outside our country. And now I'm gonna go into a distillery, which you're gonna be amazed by. And that is because I never really talked any good about them. Macmillan. This is a um, private single cask. It is uh, a peated bourbon cask. It's like four years old. 56.68%. It's actually decent. It's okay. I was given this one by someone who bought a cask and uh, bottled it. I get, got a bottle from it free. It's okay, actually. It's one of the better high um, McMurray's I tried. And I do pick a lot of McMurray, but I do think that it's because McMurray can do really good stuff. It's just that they need to, yeah, do it, make it better, in <laughs> my opinion. Because they can, they were the first distillery, they want to start it all. Next one I do have is from a new open distillery here that just released their second bottle. Uh, yeah, I think it's quite a cool one, I guess. Agitator or Agitato. Argument, argument uh, chestnut, so it's been matured in a chestnut tree, 46% and 70 centiliter. Uh, let's go pick out the bottle so you can see it as well. It has something very interesting. This is the bottle shape, I do like the bowl. It looks like one of those rage whiskies that uh, Andrew from Precision Liquids, please check him out, has done. And it has a screw cork, yeah, screw cork. Fun school. It's still young, I will say that, but it is promising. It is promising, and now we're gonna get into the last part. Where I have the most of my Swedish collection from. And now, doubt you're gonna realize it's Bärslagen. So stay tuned. Yeah, so let's do Bärslagen. And everyone who doesn't know about it, I will put a link down below on the episode we did. But this is my favorite one. You see how little it is? This is Valve, Peter Madeira, and Bourbon Casks. Fucking amazing. It's close from a close Swedish distillery known as Kritita. So that's that one. Um, another one here. It's from their French oak cask series. This is a Bordeaux eight-year-old single cask, 57% ABV. It's okay. I think it still needs to breathe a little bit. Another one is from their Swedish Mythology series, like the werewolf one, but this was the first lineup they did before that one. And this is an elf, 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 so yeah. It is 100% Swedish oak, lightly peated. That's the only reason why I bought it, because it was like Swedish oak. We have a Trollhö, Brandy and Sherry cask, matured. <laughs> Fucking amazing. Uh, virgin oak, they did, it's uh, see, French and Swedish virgin oaks. Hit, this was a miss in my opinion, it was a real miss. Yeah, we're gonna bounce, it was a miss. Next one is uh, Two Hearts, eight year old, a mix between uh, bourbon and sherry. Really good stuff, really good stuff, 48%. All of these are also half a liter, just so you know. Then we have um, some of the early releases they did. There's a six year old Sherry Darling Fairy peated. They also had an expression that was unpeated. That one was much better in my opinion. It's still nice. Next one is the Becky Heston or the Swedish Kelpie. Berber new French oak casks. It's okay, but it's not my favorite. Uh, next one, a ghast or a ghoul or ghost, uh, peated cognac and bourbon casks. This is amazing stuff, really good stuff. My fourth whiskey of the year, I think, was actually. And the Vogel one, the, um, where is it? This one was my second best whiskey of the year. Could have been my best whiskey of the year, actually. It was really close. Let's see. There we go. Um, Askfrid, the Ash Wife. Yeah. Not Ass, but Ash, yeah. Peter Sauterne and Bourbon Cask matured. Not my favorite, but still good. Um, one for another independent bottler who bought some cask there, Silent Swede. This is a virgin French oak cask. 61.9% ABV, the highest ABV of all of them. Uh, this is amazing stuff. I actually managed to get the whole two more bottles of this. This is amazing. <laughs> Fucking amazing stuff. Um, and of course, one of the latest releases they've done. And this is their oldest one, Decennium. It's a 10 year old. And this is a bourbon and cognac cask, 1000 balls made, 58% ABV. I haven't drinking that much into it yet, or gotten into it that much yet, but it is promising. 
So, that was my Swedish whiskey collection. Um, keep your eye on Swedish whiskeys, it's gonna be fucking amazing when it blows out, you know, comes out more. Hopefully more channel will talk about it. Not many do, unfortunately. Due to availability, of course, like I said before. But Swedish whiskey, keep an eye on it, because it's gonna be fucking amazing. Maybe even the new Japanese whiskey, I know. Big words, right? Big words. So anyway, uh, stay tuned, people, and I'll see you in the next episode, where I do, will do my Irish whiskey collection. Okay, bye.